Hi guys, welcome back to Windsor Kids. So cool to have you here. And this week is really exciting because we have a brand new series that we're going to start. So as some of you may remember, over the last 12 weeks, we've done Books of the Bible, where we go through various sections of the Bible to try and learn all 66 books. Now, I know many of you have been trying to memorize and um, all 66, 66 books, but if you could guys send us photos or videos or anything that could um, help us see what you're doing, that would be amazing. We'd love to see the progress you guys have made. Now, this week, I am so excited, and you can tell, you may have a bit of a guess what theme we're going with. So the theme of this new series is Finding Jesus Under the Sea. Now, each week, we're going to look at a different creature of the sea, and we're going to relate it to how we can find Jesus and how we can find uh, meaning in that. Uh, well, this week, we're going to find, uh, we're going to look at the creatures known as dolphins. Um, Pat is going to explain a little bit more about that. Um, but before we go, I can see that I'm underwater. And because I'm underwater, we need a few different things. We need our breathing apparatus. So you pump air through this end. It comes out there so you can view all the fishes underwater. For that, if you're underwater, and it's very key, you need a couple of these, they're flippers. Um, they work great with hands as well. And of course, no snorkeling gear or diving gear are complete without goggles. Not these ones. Um, you need a couple of these. So, you need a couple of these ones. So, these are really necessary. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to see a lot because I'm wearing these, so I'm going to take these off for now. Um, and we'll head straight into our next phase, which is highlights. Now, you all have just seen uh, my highlight, which is trying on scuba and snorkeling gear. What about you guys? Take a time to pause this video right now and discuss with your family or your siblings or your friends uh, what's been your highlight. And after that, let's head to Patsy, who's going to share with her some of her favorite highlight, which is birthdays. So, um, Patsy, take it away. Thanks, Dylan, and thanks, everyone, for sharing your highlights. We so love to hear them, and we can't wait to see you guys in person when we can hear everyone's highlights again. In the meantime, we've come to one of my favorite highlights every week, and that is birthdays. So we do know a couple of you have had birthdays this last week. So if you have, happy, happy birthday. We hope you had an amazing day. We can't wait to see you, to give you your birthday gift. But in the meantime, let's get those poppers popping. Thanks, Betsy. Um, man, I love birthdays. Um, but right now, we're going to move on to our next item, which is our More Than Me section. Uh, if you haven't joined us before, our more than me section is this idea that being a Christian is more than just ourselves and what we do on a Sunday. It's the people around us and around the world. And this week, I'd like to look at a special group of people that uh, really encapsulates the more than me spirit of things. And that is, of course, our essential workers. Now, many of you may have family members or know of someone who's an essential worker. But for those of you who don't, and essential work is someone whose job is essential to our daily lives. Like people who work in a big grocery store, like I can say, or the post office. This week, when you're saying your prayers at night, set a time, time to think of those who do such important work. Um, nurses and so many, many others who do work, especially during this difficult time. So um, I really appreciate if you guys would do that. Um, so let's head to our teacher now with Patsy. Thanks, Dylan, and thanks to all our amazing essential workers. And as yet, let's keep them in our prayers this week and for always. So how many of you guys have seen Buffett's in real life? I know one of my favorite memories ever is going out on a boat far into the sea and sitting on a net and having dolphins swim underneath me. They're so beautiful. Have you ever seen what a dolphin can do? They are the smartest sea creatures around. 
In fact, some people even say dolphins may be smarter than we are. Dolphins can do amazing things. They can learn tricks. They respond to commands, especially if there's a fish treat involved. And dolphins, better than almost any other animal, can communicate with each other and with us. They don't use words like we do, but they've got their own language of squeaks and chirps and clicks and all other sounds that they use to talk to each other. You can Google dolphin talk and you'll hear all of those really cool sounds. Out in the wild, dolphins are always chatting with one another. Their ability to communicate helps them hunt and avoid danger. And dolphins love to talk. I know quite a few of you know what I'm talking about here because you love talking too. When you see dolphins in the wild or see videos of dolphins, you'll see that they're always talking. And it often makes me wonder what they're saying. I think one's saying, hey, Larry, you let me know. It's people again. Let's do a flip and splash them. Dolphins are social creatures, so they love to talk. We love dolphins because we love talking too. We have that in common. We as people talk about everything you can imagine. School, family, sports, music, TV. And sometimes we just talk for the sake of talking. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I find it quite fun too. But today, I want to challenge you guys to become believers who talk about something truly important. Can you guess who the really important person is that we can be talking about? Jesus. See, when Jesus left earth, he gave his followers a challenge to take the good news about his resurrection to the world. Jesus is counting on us. He's counting on me. He's counting on you to share that good news with our family, our friends, our classmates, with everyone we meet. There was a a guy named Philip in Acts who is remembered for one incredible thing. He was always bringing people to Jesus. One day, God led Philip out to meet a man he had never met before. Philip went. He listened to God. And what happened next caused the good news of Jesus to spread far further than ever before. But before we continue, we'll learn more about Philip a bit later. But right now, you know what time it is, so get up on your feet, do those stretches, and let's head over for worship. Hi everyone, let's do some worship, let's start with some stretches. Okay, let's reach up to the sky, and then down to the ground, and one leg, and then the other leg, try to keep your balance, and now let's do some star jumps. And into pre position, and now let's pray. God, we thank you so much that we can come together and worship you, even from our different houses. We thank you for your amazing love and how much you love every single one of us. And we also thank you that we moved into the church this week. Amen. All right, so this week we're going to do Happy Day, and it's a song that's all about how Jesus washed our sins away for us so we can be free.
just you are mine Endless joy and perfect peace The earthly pain finally will see Celebrate, Jesus is alive I love that worship song. Great worshiping, guys. Um, before we get into our next one, which is our game, uh, let's go with our memory verse. Um, this week, uh, we've got a special someone uh, doing our memory verse. Uh, but before we head to her, um, I'll, I'll, it's a brand new memory verse, so I'll let you guys know what it is. It's from Romans chapter 8, verse 39. It says, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation. We will be able to separate us We'll be able to separate from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's a beautiful memory verse, and it's well worth remembering every week, not just on a Sunday, that nothing's going to take us away from God and his love. Uh, we've got Hannah Clark is going to um, share with us um, her version of the memory verse. So, Hannah, take it away. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Fantastic, guys. I love that memory verse so much. Um, it means a lot to us. But before we continue with our teach, uh, let's, go, let's go play a game. Um, since we're under the sea, clearly, um, and most of our games are going to be related to under the sea. Um, this next game is called, Can You Spot That Creature Under the Sea? It's a bit lengthy, but trust me, it's a fun game. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a picture, uh, but it's a really zoomed in picture. And you've got to try and guess what kind of creature is under the sea with me. Okay, really simple. Uh, you only have a few seconds to guess, otherwise then I'll show you the real answer. See if you can get all of the uh, creatures before I show them to you. How fun is that? Okay. Ready for the first one? Okay, here we go. And three, two, one, bam. I'll give you five seconds to see if you can guess it. Okay. Three, two, one. Well, if you guessed shark, then you are absolutely right. Great start so far. Sharks, a little bit terrifying, but luckily they are far away. See if you can guess this next one. Boom. If you guessed octopus, then you are on fire. Huh, I don't think that I think that octopus looks like a squidward. Looks like a squidward. Um, here's another one uh, that you might get. So have a look at this one. I think this one appears on SpongeBob as well. Well, if you guessed crab, then you're absolutely right. Um, in fact, owner of 
um, a restaurant, I believe, Mr. Crab. Uh, here's the next one. I think most of you will get this one, even though it's zoomed in just a little bit. I'll zoom out the photo soon, don't worry. If you get starfish, then well done. Not all of them are pink, but this is a really good guess. Well done, guys. See if you can guess this next one. Ooh, it's very similar to the one we've had before. But if you guessed whale, then fantastic job, guys. Oh, man, you guys are really good on the sea. And here's the last one. Hopefully you'll recognize this one. Um, mentioned a little bit earlier. Here we go. That's right. If you guess dolphins, fantastic guessing, guys. How many of you got them right away? Be honest. Um, it's a pretty simple game, but it does serve a really important purpose. Um, the point of it is that we always need to let our voices be heard so that people will know the good news about Jesus. And the one creature under the sea that always let his voice be known is dolphins, and that's the one that we last saw. Now, before we begin our teach, um, I'd like us to look at our Bible story for today. Um, so everybody, get your Bible and turn to, uh, to Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. And the Bible story is called Philip and the Ethiopian. Um, I know you guys listen to my, like listening to my voice, but I thought for a different change, we'll let someone else read the Bible story. So um, we're going to cut to Mika. Um, she's at home. She's going to read the Bible story for us. So Mika, please take it away. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Go south to the desert road, he said. It's the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip started out. On his way, he met an Ethiopian official. That man had an, had an important position in charge of all wealth of Kandak. Kandak means queen of, e of Ethiopia. This official had gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The Holy Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot, stay near it. So Philip ran up to the chariot. He heard a man reading, Elisa, the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said. I need someone to explain it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Here is the part of scripture the official was reading. It says, he was led like sheep to be killed, just as lambs were silent while, be, while their wool were being cut off. He did not open his mouth when he was treated badly. He refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from earth. The official said to Philip, Tell me, who is the prophet talking about talking about himself or someone else? So Philip then Philip began that same part of scripture. He told the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water. The official said Look, there is water. What can stop me from being baptized? He gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the official went down to down into the water. Philip baptized him. When they came out up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. The official did not see him again. He went off on his way filled joy. Philip was next seen at Astos, Astos. From there he travelled all around. He preached the good news in all town. Finally he arrived in Nicaragua. Well, Philip wasn't a shy man, was he? How many of you would go up to a new kid on the playground and say, Hey, I'm Patsy? You know that Jesus loves you. But that's sort of what Philip did. He introduced himself. He saw what the man was reading and he used it to share the good news of Jesus. 
And because Philip did that, the gospel was taught to the man from Ethiopia, and that man took the good news back to Africa with him. Do you guys know that Ellen and I both come from Africa? Our families, our descendants, learned about Jesus because of Philip talking to the Ethiopian man. How cool is that? Now, we all have our own different way of saying, hey, did you know Jesus loves you? But we all have that way. So guys, why don't you think about how can you talk to people you love or people you just meet about Jesus? Could you tell them about the fun that you have at Windsor Kids? Hey, I'm Patsy. And every Sunday, I get to hang out with my friends and with Jesus at Windsor Kids. Why don't you come along with me when we meet together again? Well, you know, guys, you could even say to your friends, hey, why don't you watch this video of Windsor Kids online? How cool would that be? So we know we've covered pretty well that humans are social creatures, just like dolphins. We love to talk and we spend a lot of our day talking. Jesus wants us to talk to others about him, as we've learned before. And he wants us to do that so that people can see how much we love Jesus, the difference Jesus makes in our lives. And he wants us to let people know that they can meet with him too, that he loves them just as much as he loves us. And with that in mind, let's cut over to our video teach this morning. Have fun, guys. Stories of the Bible, Philip and the Ethiopian. This is Philip, Hello. who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Philip preached the good news of Jesus in many places. One day, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, Go south down the desert road. I hear that. So Philip started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. The man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning to Ethiopia. He was in his carriage reading the book of Isaiah out loud. Hey there. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Okay, I can do that. Philip ran over and heard the man reading and asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I, unless someone teaches me? Come on up here. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Those parts here. The Ethiopian asked Philip, tell me, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture in Isaiah, Philip told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. Wait, 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 hold on. And the Ethiopian said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop. Stop. And they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and took him to another town. The Ethiopian never saw Philip again, but went on his way rejoicing. I love that video. Um, sometimes videos are a way for us to easily digest some information with the Bible rather than just reading it. And that gives a really clear picture of Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian. You know, it's not always easy to strike up a conversation about God, um, especially when most of the world seems so divided. But I want to share with you a few things from the story that I hope will encourage you. First, God was the one who led Philip to the Ethiopian. It was God who made sure that Philip was at the right place and at the right time to meet this man. We don't think of God working so actively in our world today, but he is still working. Every day he puts people in our paths, hoping that through words or actions, we'll show the person that Jesus loves them. If we ask God to put people in our lives so we can share the gospel, he will answer. And he will give us that opportunity. Second thing is, Philip used what the man was reading to share the good news. The man happened to be reading the Old Testament, which made things easy for Philip. But if we're wise, we can use almost anything to share Jesus with someone. We can look for Christian themes in movies and in music. We can listen to someone's troubles and offer them hope by telling them that Jesus loves them, no matter what they've been through. There's always a way. 
And God will always help you find that way if you pray and listen. And the third thing I want you to remember is how the Ethiopian responded to the gospel. He was so excited. He wanted to get baptized right away. Look, here's some water. There's nothing more exciting for a believer than seeing someone accept Jesus for the first time. And once you leave one person, you'll want to bring more to Jesus. Come to think of it, dolphins are very chatty creatures. But so are humans. We love to talk, and let's face it, we do it well. My prayer is that we will take the time to talk about something that truly matters. Ask God to give you that opportunity to share Jesus with others. And let's use our gift of talking to spread the gospel every chance we get. Let's have a look at our bottom line today. Um, it should appear on the screen, but it says, God wants us to share Jesus with other people. It's a simple bottom line. Um, but he gave us a voice for a reason, and we should use it. Let's say it one more time. God wants us to share Jesus with other people. Let's spend a few moments quiet reflecting that, okay? You can pause the video if you like, or just let it run through. Um, we're going to cut to Patsy now. He's going to teach us another discipline of being a Christian. I uh, believe this week it's about kindness. So, Patsy, take it away. Thanks, Dylan. Guys, so you all know that usually we try to learn or practice a different discipline of being a Christian each week. And this week, we're going to practice kindness. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, kindness costs nothing. And that's true. And why is it true? It's true because really, it takes nothing for us to be kind to someone. Well, sometimes we um, have to give up things that we love. But you know what? The payoff is so much better than the cost. Have you ever noticed how when you're feeling a bit sad one day and someone smiles at you, suddenly you feel like smiling too? Or you think, hmm, this guy's not as grey as I thought it was. Maybe someone let you pet their puppy or maybe someone shared their chocolate with you. Small little acts of kindness mean so much to people. You know what? We never know what our kindness does for someone else. We never know how important it might be to them. Because kindness is an encouragement. It shows how God would act towards other people, and it shows the love of Jesus. And God created us. God created kindness. So by showing kindness to other people, especially those we don't know or those who we don't really like at the moment, like if our sister or brother's been annoying to us or when mum and dad have said no to us. Showing kindness is showing the love of Jesus and showing the difference God makes in your life. So our challenge to you this week is to think of ways that you can show kindness to people who are in your household, and people at school or your neighbours. If you just decide, you know what, this week, I'm going to smile at one stranger every day. And you'll be surprised at the difference it makes, not only to the other people, because you'll never see them again. So you don't know the difference it will make to them. But I can guarantee you that when you smile at other people, you smile inside as well. I know when I'm feeling pretty bad about life and I go out for a walk, if I make a conscious effort to smile at the people I pass, I end up feeling pretty good at the end of it too. So guys, that's our challenge to you. Smile or find other ways of kindness to show who God is and how much he loves you and how much you love him. And now let's head over for our closing prayer. Hey everyone, I'd love to pray for you now. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Lord, I thank you that we can still come together and learn more about you. I thank you that you love us so much and are always watching over us. I thank you for all these amazing kids and I pray that you'll be with each and every one of them as they go into this week and as they start back at their schools. Amen. Thanks so much for that prayer, Meg. Um, and thank you guys for uh, and joining us for our new series, Jesus Under the Sea. We've had a whale of a time. And... Uh, <laughs> I had to, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but seriously, guys, it's been so amazing catching up with you. Um, <laughs> <up> to Patsy. <laughs>
Thanks, and I wasn't expecting that. Um, guys, yeah, we've loved having you um, join us today. And just remember that at 3 o'clock this afternoon, we have our Zoom handout. We've got another really cool game planned for you guys. So um, come along and join us and let's have some fun together. But until then, we're going to end off in our favorite way with some worship songs. So get up on your feet and let's worship together. Let's do Jesus in my life and let it be known. See you next week. Bye. Bye.
us now. No one can keep us down. We found our voice again. Oh, oh, oh. No need for fear and shame. There's power in His name. Come on, let freedom reign.